Hello friends, we are here with another video. This video is about three-stage nuclear program of India. It is basically civilian nuclear program for power production rather than being a military one. Dr. Homi Jahagir Bhabha, he is the father of Indian civilian nuclear program. He born in 1909 and died in 1966 in a plane crash. India has very limited uranium reserve. But it has very huge thorium reserve. Thorium is not a fissile material. It requires to be transmuted in uranium-233 before it starts producing power in nuclear reactor. And that is why India requires three complete stages to use the thorium reserves. India has very large amount of thorium reserve. It has 25% of world's extractable thorium. That is why we can say that India is practically Saudi Arabia in terms of thorium. We can see here, India has 25% of world's thorium, Australia has 24.90. This stands that half of the world's thorium is located in two countries, India and Australia. This gives India a strategic position where if we are able to harvest the capabilities of thorium, that means India would become a power surplus country. We will, we will start exporting power to other neighbors. However, these are the three stages of the nuclear program. First one is a pressurized heavy reactor. Second one is fast breeder reactor. And third one is thorium based reactor. In a pressurized heavy reactor, we need uranium 238 as input and it gives plutonium-239 as a byproduct. Then we feed this plutonium-239 in a fast breeder reactor with mixed oxide fuel that is uranium-238. Again it produces plutonium-239 but in this stage we will get more plutonium-239 than we applied in input. That is why it is called fast breeder reactor. It breeds plutonium-239. Because the added mixed oxide fuel uranium-238 will also convert in plutonium-239. That means we will have plutonium-239 more than the input. Then we will feed this plutonium-239. In stage 3, thorium-232 will be supplied alongside with uranium-233. Uranium-233 will transmute to plutonium-239. But this transmuted plutonium-239 will make thorium a fissile material. The advantage of this, we just need to add thorium-232 in the nuclear reactor and this complete stage will become self-sustainable. Now, here, by 2030, India would be having 48 gigawatt. These are the pessimistic forecast, but optimist says that it would be 63 and by 2050, we would be having 175 gigawatt and gigawatt is a very huge amount of energy. You can see the by these formulas that I have provided. This is the expenditure of my home of one month. You can say we are closing to one megawatt, but still we are quite far. But if we take it as a one megawatt, that means with one gigawatt we can power thousand homes per month. And imagine what we what we can do with one seventy five gigawatts. It is a very huge quantum of energy, but India will only produce it with nuclear nuclear power reactors. India has also plans of renewable energy, where India has explicit target of 175 gigawatt. So, by 2050, we would be having at least 350 gigawatts. So, what's the progress? Stage 1, almost completed. We have uh, precise heavy water reactor all over the country running. In stage 2, we have developed the pro prototypes and reactor construction is an ongoing in Kal Kalpakkam. It is quite delayed from the schedule as you can see. It is scheduled to complete in 2012 but it is still going on in 2016. However, stage 3 can function only when two stage acquires 50 gigawatt capacity. And why this is so? Because if you have less than 50 gigawatt capacity, that means 
you will not have enough plutonium to sustain the stage 3 and this stage is expected to begin in 2050. The solution, 2050 is quite far away, India is needing the power as India is required to boost their manufacturing capacity. So there is a solution also. Japan, Russia, Europe has huge stockpile of plutonium. If we buy that byproduct, then we can expedite our second stage program. That means they have a huge plutonium reserve. And if we are able to buy that plutonium, that means we don't need to wait for 50 gigawatt capacity for the second stage. Uh, we can just begin our third stage. All the countries which use a nuclear reactor are worried about the safe disposal of plutonium. It is a problem for them, but we need their problems. It is an asset for us, so we can move to a, towards the th third stage of the, our nuclear program. But plutonium can be used to make nuclear bomb because it's a fissile material and plutonium can be converted into a weapon grade plutonium. That is why India needs membership of NSG. NSG is an elite nuclear suppliers group. It was created in the response of India's nuclear test in Smiling Buddha when India first exploded the nuclear device. It will facilitate easy access to a technology and fuel if we get the membership of NSG. It is very important for us. But as China is blocking our efforts to gain the membership of the an elite NSG group, India is not just waiting for membership. India is trying its foreign policy muscles with another country. We recently had a deal with Japan. It is a civil nuclear deal. India now can access the nuclear market of the Japan where we can get the technology for reactor and the fissile material to sustain it. So we can now buy the plutonium from the Japan and the speed up our second state civilian nuclear program. It will also diversify our nuclear market since in India there is a huge presence of France and Russia in nuclear market. Now Japanese are also about to come in our market. This will diversify our market. Diversification is very essential by taking the geopolitical angle. It will give new push to India for her membership with an elite NSG group. Since only China is the country that is blocking our NSG membership effort and if we, India start to accessing the civilian nuclear deal with individual countries, this will also put a lot of pressure on China to accept our membership. So this has implication there too. But this deal has a very peculiar point called nullify clause. This agreement says that if India ever resorted to use the technology or the fissile material for weapons provided by Japan, Japan will shut down agreement after giving one year advance notice. So this is a point in the, in the deal but we don't need have to worry because India never ever goes against their promise. So friends, here we are expecting a great and bright future for India and we hope by 2050 India will be a power surplus country exporting power to our neighborhood and we would be making Asia more bright. So thank you for watching our video. Please like, share and don't forget to subscribe us. More videos are on the way. Thank you.